we got two heads of Napa Valley cabbage right here, right now, and we're draining it. Tonight, I got locked out of my apartment because I dropped my key in the drain. I was walking home after work tonight, and I dropped my key in the drain right through the slot. Tried to rip it up, had to wait an hour outside my apartment. Now, I'm making kimchi. Woo! All right, we're gonna drop this down here below and we're gonna cut up the vegetables that I need to do. using the skin on because it actually makes it taste better. <clears throat> I know that other people like to go ahead and just peel it and make it look presentable. But in the end, it's going to be covered in a uh, thick sauce of red pepper garlic and fish sauce. So we're going to go ahead and just do this the most easiest way possible because kimchi is all about what you put it into rather than the taste. And I know some Koreans would probably say otherwise, but I've eaten a lot of kimchi in my time. And <clears throat> I think that the overall taste factor well represented. And the actual quality of the spices rather than the uh, quality of the vegetables. And you, and you can see from this that it's really hard. <clears throat> it's really hard. Alright. Alright. There we got some grated ginger and mangchi always says to cut it cat or er, uh, cut it matchstick style but I think that this should work so I'm gonna put it into my frying pan because I have no proper kitchen in, in Japan but the overall quality will be represented within the actual but <clears throat> I'll leave the skin on. Mind you, I haven't eaten tonight. I have not eaten. I'm checking the camera to make sure that it's actually still recording. But I'm grating the carrot. This carrot just flew out of the window. doing two carrots in this. And we're going to add some onion and some red onion some anchovy sauce that they got from Caldi which is a very popular store here. They have imported goods from around the world and it's it's expensive but when you get a hankering for food or for food from your home country I mean it's always nice to go there and actually get food that you are familiar with and they have American products they have a lot of different types of produce and vegetables and spices the, the, their salsa is okay. It's not wonderful, but it does do the job whenever you're in the need. Uh, they do have American uh, Ortega here, but it's not really the best in the world. I haven't really made 
a lot of salsa here. I made some uh, pickled types of food. So next is the rest of my garlic. So uh, not all of it. We're gonna go and just do one bulb of garlic. But we're overdoing, overdoing this. We have two cloves of or two heads of cabbage and uh, this is a very simple recipe to make and just garlic, carrots, ginger, and I'm going to be putting some daikon which is Japanese radish, <clears throat> Japanese radish within this. And then we're going to be adding red onion and yellow onion. So, and then the remainder of the recipe is, is pretty much just sugar and red pepper flake. Mang Chi does it different. With all of her recipes, she, she tends to put the uh, like rice, rice flour, and then sugar, and mix it all together. I'm just gonna put like a little bit of sugar and mainly anchovy sauce. And the anchovy sauce is like a new take on it. Generally, I would find um, fish sauce, like Vietnamese fish sauce, but. I don't know what it is in Japanese, and they have their own version, but it's not as strong. So I've done this with my own fish sauce before. I've made fish sauce the past two years, and it was pretty strong. It made really good kimchi, just with like cutting up uh, <clears throat> cutting up sardines sea and fresh water and just letting it ferment for a year but I didn't make any last year and now I'm just trying to do this impromptu I guess this this is what Mang Chi would call a, a fast kimchi but we are doing the best that we can that we have. So, as you can see, I'm peeling all the garlic poorly. And this one has a, uh, has a baby attached to it, so it's not breaking up uniformly. So, we're making the best effort that we can. Alright, so. Keep peeling the garlic, trying to get it all out, and this is 11.30 at night, <clears throat> 11.30 at night, after work in the morning, but I wanted to do this before I make my midnight snack, which is probably just going to be leftover pasta. So, the banter that I'm doing at this point is out of starvation. I'm trying to do this fast because I'm tired. So, keep peeling the garlic. I'll probably just rush through this. I'm just going to delete the audio. Right. So, anyway, all the ends for the garlic because even if you just microwave this with butter or cook it in a pot, a slow cooker, it tends to become a little bit too chewy and dense. So cut off all your ends, leave the tops on, and uh, you don't have to be fancy about it because we're about to dice this up. And that one's done. Alright. So, now, I'm just 
cut this up. This knife cost me about 8,000 yen. And I don't want to cut this up completely diced. I, I'm just cutting it up <coughs> in chunks, okay? Because I like big pieces of garlic. But like I said, this knife cost me about seven to eight thousand yen. And it was it was a good investment. For me, at least. And it's a very well made Japanese knife. I don't remember the name of the adding some daikon like with the rest I'm not going to make this special we're going to cut half of this daikon and this is a small one it's not big at all I've seen big daikon in Japan I plan on making some Korean pickled daikon, just in cubes and whatnot, for another recipe. I'm gonna leave this big because I want it to be big so I can just like grab it with my chopsticks and mix it all together. So just leave it big. I'm going to shred the uh, the onion like we did before with the carrots and the ginger. So cut this last one slightly thin about an eighth of an inch maybe a quarter but this is how easy cooking is when you study the recipe you try and you decide if you want to start cooking this because I don't want onion pieces to be in the kimchi. I just want the juice and the flavor. <clears throat> of the, uh, the onion. And any big pieces let them fall away. I'm just going for We're 
We're using a fish sauce, which is anchovy sauce. I'm not sure really how it's going to play into this. Alright, it's probably about three quarters cup. And yep, it's almost gone. So add some this time we're gonna be using brown sugar. A tablespoon brown sugar and the salt should already be incorporated from the, the salting process. Mix this, right? Mix it up with the fish sauce and the sugar. With the fish sauce and sugar. It's getting really thick, gummy. I can taste it in the air, but this is all gonna go in and mix quite well. Mongshi will put a uh, like a paste in it, but we're gonna go ahead and put maybe half a cup of water just to get it wet, all right? So next, what we're gonna do is we're going to slowly mix this in with the, so, and remember we're cooking overseas. So we are trying to create a perfection but I have limited space, I have limited mobility within my apartment. So here we have the cabbage and we're gonna go ahead and use my colander to try to create a new kimchi. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of this and we're going to go ahead and mix together my carrot, ginger, garlic, onion mixture in a frying pan because like I said, I don't really have a lot of space here. So if I had a normal kitchen, like last year I had a huge kitchen, I would be able to show you all the dynamics. So handful of this and grab some red pepper paste mix with fish sauce and you're gonna go ahead and knead it into the cabbage right and trust me when this all comes together what's gonna happen is that it's going to start to sweat the salt all the vegetables, everything is going to come together and it's going to create a, uh, a nice range of flavors. I just laid out a plastic bag and I'm being all ghetto about this, but we're gonna start packing it all together. And I made this differently before, I've done it with a uh, lacto fermentation process, but in this I'm doing it handmade. So here you go, first one, first one. So second step, same thing. Grab some cabbage, put it into the colander. And this is all crispy still from the amount of time I allowed it to come 
together, put a handful and grab some more go to chunk paste. At the end of this, at the end of this, I'm gonna add some gochujang. This is just red pepper flake. It's not super spicy. It's actually quite mellow. Uh, cayenne pepper itself is a lot hotter, but this is actually quite mellow in comparison. You don't really taste it, so. All right, and we're being real sloppy about this. It can be a lot nicer, but like I said, it's all going to come together in the end product. So, and we'll be clean about it. We'll clean up the bags, we'll clean up everything. We've got four bags all strung together, ready for this process. So, keep at it. set this outside when I'm done because it's still cool in Japan and we're trying to create this dynamic kimchi. Alright, now I'm being messy but you be messy too. So and add some carrot, ginger, and garlic. Icon radish. And go ahead and mix it in. And, uh, and don't get me wrong, there's there's many ways to make this. Okay, kimchi is diverse, and the end result. I keep mentioning mangchi, but the end result is that the fermentation process. There's enough salt. There's enough bacteria. There's enough red pepper. Mix it in with this. All you want to do is coat it. She's done it traditional methods where you actually take the, the whole cabbage and salt each individual layer. But I'm not doing that. I cut it up into quarters and I'm trying to get everything together. It's real fast paced. I soaked the cabbage enough. So like eight to 10 hours. And now, this one's cool enough. So, I'm gonna slip this to the side. I have my hands all dirty. 